Hey, U.S. Lifehacks fans, I'm Will Landman, Metney U.S. Wire and founder of U.S. Lifehacks, and we have an exciting video today with uh, 2012 International Israel Affairs Vice President Ryan Sherman and my friend. Um, and we're really excited because it's Yom HaAtzmaut, and we have an awesome video planned for you guys today, and we're going to get right into it. So what is Yom HaAtzmaut, Ryan? Well, Yom HaAtzmaut is Israel Independence Day. So today... We're celebrating the 64th Yom Atzmaut, which means that Israel has been, has, uh, this is the 64th year since Israel's establishment, um, which is incredibly important for the Jewish people. It means that we finally have a Jewish state. Um, uh, it's something interesting about Yom Atzmaut is that it, it's preceded by Yom Azikaron, which is the memorial day for all of those who have, um, died serving Israel and defending Israel. So Israel, all of Israel, the mood switches from the somber and, re and reflective uh, mood on Yom HaZegaron to an excited and celebratory um, mood on Yom HaZegaron. So there's a huge ceremony um, that they have um, to bring in Yom HaZegaron with all the excitement at um, Har Herzl, it, right, out, uh, right around Jer in Jerusalem. So I'm going to point to the part of the map, which is, well, give me one second, sorry, if, you, if, it, if you're just tuning in, <laughs> I pulled up a map, and I'm going to show you where it is, so it's right around there, I'm going to pull this up so you can see it, and, and so, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, so, so they have yeah. fireworks yeah. and um, speakers, yeah. speakers and music, yeah. and they, they bring in the, um, just, just like we do in the United States, we have fireworks everywhere and we have the fireworks down on the National Mall in DC. Um, they have this huge celebration and, and ceremony to bring in, um, the Independence Day and all the excitement that comes with that. Um, we, I remember visiting, uh, Har Hartzell on, um, on pilgrimage and it's, it's, in, it's incredible, like, you look out and you're on the top of a, uh, of this mountain. It's very cool. And, um, it's a, there's a military cere uh, cemetery there. And, um, but with my pilgrimage group, it, it's incredible. Like just the feeling of being in Israel and, and, and Will has some pictures, um, from pilgrimage, just the experience of being in Israel. Um, it's such just, a uh, changing experience it's so um it's powerful you you have all of um you know all the you know different opinions that come with uh having a whole bunch of jews together in one place as well as um plenty of others and it's but it's just an incredible experience being in israel so if you haven't been to israel i think you have to go i mean it's, it's something it's not something you can't do um so the, the uh Pictures that Will was just showing was actually in a calendar that our staff from Pilgrimage made for us and gave to us at the end of Pilgrimage. Um, and Will? Yeah, and I, I have to agree with everything Ryan was saying because uh, Pilgrimage for me was an extraordinary experience. I've been wanting to go to Israel since I was really young. And I have here with me my uh, plane ticket to Israel. I kept it. It was like a memento of mine. And, you know, all the pictures that I showed and even the map, like, it's just, it's so, it's such an amazing experience to just be there for as long as we were. We were there for five weeks, and it was an amazing experience. We did Israel Venture Plus, and uh, so we got to do Ghana. So I'll pull up another picture again of Ghana. And that really was, it It makes Yom move much more meaningful to me, because, you know, I felt like, and Yom HaZikaron especially, because although I wasn't in the Army um, for more than a week, um, I still felt like, part of that community and I felt what it was like to go through what they went through in that first week 
and obviously it's not a full experience as many um, Israelis will say, but it's definitely an experience that I recommend because it really just, you know, it puts you out of your element and it really makes you understand that, you know, this is what I would be doing instead of going to college. And that was definitely an interesting experience. And then just to keep moving along, uh, Ryan touched upon Jerusalem and the excitement in Jerusalem. So Ben Yehuda was just an exciting place to be. And I know Ryan can attest to that. And if you saw the interview, I said he was the man to, to go to when it came to falafel and shawarma because he just had like pages upon pages of good locations. And one of the places he took me, like I think the first day we were in, or day we were at Ben Yehuda was Moshiko. And I have the bag because um, they gave, I asked them if they could give me like, you know, a bag to bring back with me. They gave me two and I actually cut one up and put it a part of my, uh, my sidor here. But, um, yeah, so, Ryan, if you want to talk about Ben Yehuda and what that was like, and I, I know I have some funny stories related to Ben Yehuda. Um, ben Yehuda Street is the excitement of being in Israel combined with, like, a mall and then watching all the tourists doing all the silly things from accidentally kicking over um, people's cha- bowls of change. Um, I didn't do that. Will didn't do that. But... It, it happens, um, <laughs> to, um, or me, you know, or me getting, uh, ripped off as I haggled horribly, uh, for some to fill in. It was pretty bad. Uh, Ryan was but, there with me. And the night, yeah. the night that, uh, the night that we haggled, uh, the night that I haggled and got the to fill in, I was so proud. I'm like, this is the best deal ever. And then the next day I realized I got ripped off and I was so mad. So, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that when you go to Israel, you're going to get ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're Will Landman and then you're going to get ripped off. But no, I mean like, there's so many interesting things in Israel. Like, I showed some of the kippahs. Like, I got this awesome Islanders kippah, like, from the kippah guy. And also, I got this from the Rabbi Nachman people. And there's just so much excitement in Israel. And we were there at an interesting time, which I want to go into, because it's very significant, because this is the first uh, first year that this actually really uh, is... I think it's significant to talking about, because when we went, um, you know... There were, uh, Gilad Shalit was not, uh, was not home yet. He did not come home. And we actually got to meet his family and got to talk to them. They were outside, um, uh, where were they outside, right? They, they, they were, were outside, outside um, um, the Prime Minister's home in Jerusalem. And they had been camping out there. And they were going to, and they camped out there until, um, their son came home. And it was, it was, it was a very, it was interesting. It was moving. It was, um, but most of all, there was, it was just, there was something going on that was different, um, something different than, you know, other people have gone to Israel, you know, maybe like our parents when they've gone to Israel in, in the past. It was um, something unique to our trip. And now that he's home, um, it, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, nothing can bring me more joy in the world to know that, you know, that someone who is serving Israel and protecting um, its right to exist um, who was in danger is now is now safe at home. And I think it's just special in the sense that a day where we, you know, not like honor the dead and honor the people who defend Israel, is got to be such a more poignant day with the first year of Gilad Shalit being back, finally. And I think also to just go into that a little more was, you know, we got to meet his family, like I said, and talking to them, you could understand how much they wanted their, you know, I'm holding up the picture that we got. Um, we also were given uh, petitions that we signed and T-shirts and stuff like that. Actually, we bought T-shirts. And it was just such a unique experience. And I think Yom HaAzmut this year and Yom HaZikaron this year are much more meaningful for the for this year. And I mean, I'm, not, I'm not trying to downplay any of the, you know, other soldiers that, you know, honor... Israel and protect Israel, but like, I fe- really feel that this is much more significant this year after, you know, if you think about it, this is his first time in how many years since he was captured that he's actually been in Israel to celebrate this holiday, you know what I mean? And I think that's really special. Um, you know, I, I agree, and, but, um, that's exactly, and the excitement that Israel, um, that as just such a, as a community is, is, that Israel, um, creates that excitement is tremendous. And, uh, I watched some of the, um, some of the clips from, 
from the ceremony, and it, I mean, there's, I don't think I've seen, you know, that, that kind of excitement like anywhere, anywhere else. Like, it's just, there's something specific about, you know, going to like, you know, like a Jewish wedding or like a Jewish, like, you know, special family event or something like that. And then, but then putting like, you know, you know, the, like a half, basically half the, uh, world's Jewish community in one place for a, um, for the, for the celebration of something so important. Um, the kind of excitement that you can expect is just, it's even, it's even higher than that. It's, it's sky high. I think this was a really important video to do again this year, because we did it last year and it was just really me with like users submitted, Ryan, you submitted something, uh, Terry, who's another team member and a few other US wires submitted stuff. And it was a much more, you know, historical look on it. But I think this is a much more personal take on it, especially with you now, uh, being international IA. I think this is really um, important that, you know, USY gets to see that you have all this experience with Israel and that we had together, whether they were funny stories or um, or just really amazing stories. And I'm just going to go into, uh, just briefly, and maybe you want to tell a really important story to you. Um, just for me, Israel, when I went um, to the Western Wall the second time, um, it was on Shabbat, and it was with Ryan and a few others. It was my all the birthday. guys. It, yeah, it was your birthday. I, I forgot about that. Wow. Um, yeah, and so, you know, this important day was also the day of Ryan's birthday. It just <laughs> coincide. Um, so, we were, we got there, and we ended up getting to be part of, like, a service, uh, and the rabbi actually wanted me to do an aliyah, and I was like, oh my god, I'm doing an aliyah at the Western Wall, but the most beautiful aspect of it was that as the sun was, you know, slowly starting to come up more and as everyone was slowly getting farther and closer and closer to the wall, everything stopped for a moment and he just, he took my, he took my talus, I have my talus here, I'll, I'll get it out. He took my talus and he, he put it over my head and he said a prayer. I'm not entirely sure what the prayer was. Uh, I, I forgot, uh, my roast told me at the time, and I just remember it being really powerful, but just that moment, that was, I called my parents right after Shabbat was over, and that was, and it was, I forgot about the time difference, so I ended up waking them up, um, and I just remember that was the most special moment, because I had not called them at all to tell them I was okay or anything like that, I had just, this was the first time calling them, and it was just to talk about the fact that I just done the Aliyah at the Western Wall, and that was a really special moment, and it made it much more emotional when we left Israel. And I was bawling, as it said, you were like you were now leaving. And it was just when we left Jerusalem, I was so upset. So maybe you want to go into one of your own personal stories about the importance of Israel and something amazing that happened. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, probably, I'd, I'd say, say my, my, like, like my, my most move, one, one, one of my most moving experiences in Israel, in Israel um, was, was also at the Western Wall. It was the day pra- before, before that. that. Uh, that, that was, was also, also a very, very moving experience for me. It was very, very, very important. important. But, but that, wasn't that wasn't the first time I was at the wall. Like, I, we, had, we had went to the Western Wall the, the day before, um, I guess on the Friday afternoon or, yeah, around, around afternoon because we, we did Minfai at the, uh, the wall. And I, I remember we were, on, we were on this tour and when I saw, like, we'd been kind of, you know, walking past the wall then for two days then. Just kind of, I see it in the distance, but I couldn't, you know, really see out with the size or anything. But we get there with the group and the tour guides talking, and I was just already captivated by where I was. Um, because I just, when, when, when like people, when I think, when, when people think of Israel, like that, that is a site that they would tend to think of, and especially me, like that's somewhere where I, I put a lot of like, I attached a lot to that moment. And so, I kind of just walked away from from the group um, and just, was just walking slowly, just looking at the wall, um, not quickly towards it or anything. And I see, I was first of all surprised by the size. I imagined it a lot bigger, but I um, I just started bawling. I was I was crying so hard, and I um, especially as I approached like the ramp down into the um, down into the men's section, and um, my uh, my rosh came over and, um, and just, yeah, and, and here's a picture, um, actually that afternoon of Will at the wall, um, but that afternoon I just started, uh, Will, Will, uh, not Will, uh, our Roche 
came over <laughs> and he just um and he just comes over and he just gives me a hug and he just to, he said to him it was just such a like it was it was moving to see like you know all of us as we were seeing the coast for the first time and I I couldn't even continue walking down it took me a while then to stop crying and then continue walking and when I got down to the bottom of it and into the men's section um this man came over um and um I didn't know the man at all he just he came over and he he said um he, he just he said welcome home and um and uh in in Hebrew of course and I like it, I, I speak some Hebrew, and so it was, it was, it was very nice, and it, was, um, it meant a lot. Some random stranger, but we're family, and we're, we're, one, we're one community, and it was just, it was incredible, and he, and he just gives me a hug, and I'm like, thank you, man, I don't know. Because it, it was just, it was such an, it was, it was so great, and then I went on and um, rounded up with uh, the rest of the guys in my group, and we took a, we took a picture, and um, it was in, after Mincha and everything, but it was, that was, um, probably, I'd say, my most meaningful and moving experience in Israel. So I think we're almost done here, but we have a few more things I wanted to touch upon. But it's the time of the video, Ryan, that we talked about earlier, where we embarrass ourselves with our pilgrimage uh, IDs here. So we both have pretty embarrassing uh, pilgrimage IDs. Mine's much more embarrassing than his, because my mom picked the pictures. So I'm going to show mine first, and then you have to show yours. Okay. okay. So this is mine. Yeah, really embarrassing. And I was number 24, if anyone can catch that it's kind of backwards, 24. Okay, your turn. Um, so first, yeah, I was number 32. Uh, but now for the picture. So as you can see, um, my hair and everything now. And beard. Um, and beard. But if you, um, and then if you saw me at IC, I had slightly longer hair. I, and if you happen to have met me at IC last year, I had much larger hair. And it was, it was, uh, vol voluminous. Yeah, it was voluminous. Thank you. Much, Much volume. volume. Um, so here's my pilgrimage ID. There's not even like anything I could have done with my hair in it. Like, there's nothing I could do to help the situation. It just was like, like, you're just like, is it okay? I guess, it, I guess it's here to stay kind of thing. Um, as you can see, I'm much more cleaned up now and it's, uh, <laughs> But those were the days. <laughs> we both have pretty embarrassing pictures. I think everyone pretty much did. But um, I also want to talk about some of the more, you know, charitable things we did or the experiences of going into, like, businesses that were there. And I think one of the most powerful ones that we went to was Yad Le Hashish. And, um, and maybe if you want to touch on that while I show, you know, some stuff from there. Um, I guess um, so... so, so the um what that was was a um it was like a community where it was a it was a place where um the elderly um basically would learn how to do like a certain trade and um like a lot of like all sorts of different crafts and uh will has a uh, a talus bag um and it's a fill and bag and it's I don't know. No, I, I talk, we talked to some people there. A lot, most of them don't speak English. Most of them, a lot of them spoke Russian, right? Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of them spoke Russian. So, um, but it's it, it, it's an opportunity for um, for for the elderly to find something else that they you know would like to do, um, and it gives them it gives them the opportunity to like I guess to make money and and make a living, um, as well as the doing something they want to do and that's enjoyable for them and all sorts of these really um, really neat crafts um, I got it's actually um, hanging on my fridge but it's it's a little it's a stuffed um, like pita with falafel in it and um, it says falafel on it it's a magnet it has magnets on the back but um, I got that there another um, another thing that we did on pilgrimage um, we uh, yeah. we visited and we we learned a lot about the um, the Seeing Eye Dog see, uh, Seeing Eye Dog uh, Center for the Blind in Israel. It was um it was very interesting. We learned about how you know they uh, how they're training these dogs to speak Hebrew. Like these dogs, they they understand Hebrew because they when you get a lot of people when they um when they get a Seeing Eye Dog, they're getting them from abroad because they weren't trained in Israel and they. They don't, they don't um, respond, respond to 
Hebrew commands or they had difficulty with the accents, just picking up on, like, for the dogs to respond. Um, but the, these, all these dogs, they're, they're born and raised in Israel, they're sovereigns. They, um, but they are raised hearing Hebrew, which was, it just, it was, it was, that was very cool. I, I never really, I never really thought about, um, you know, what a dog is hearing. Uh, you know, I'm saying something to my dog, they come over here and it comes over. But it was, it was very, it was, it was very cool to learn about how, like, this kind of new services that they're then um, providing for um, for people who need them. And I I think it was definitely a really cool experience. And also we did uh, the the museum where we were all in the dark. Yeah. And we had to. Uh, it was like a really immersive experience. And I think everyone who's been on pilgrimage says it's definitely a highlight where you have. So <clears throat> I guess really what we wanted to do with this video is really give you an insight um, on what actually Yom mood is why it's important to us, um, some topics worth dis discussing with your peers and other U.S. wires uh, about Israel and about how it relates to Yom HaTzmaut. And I think um, Ryan will say after this, obviously, but I think the most important part of this whole message that we're trying to convey here is that Yom HaTzmaut is a very awesome day for Israel. And another thing that we really want to push is that I I think, I'm pretty sure there are a few spots available, I think, left to sign up for uh, pilgrimage. I'm not sure which trips uh, are available, but you can definitely talk to Ryan or talk to um, the office about that. And what we're trying to say is, if you can get to Israel this summer to go on pilgrimage, then do it. It doesn't matter what trip it is, um, if it's, you know, Latakli Alam, if it's uh, Israel Venture Plus, if it's Israel, Poland, whatever it is, getting to Israel this summer and just going with your peers in USY is an experience that is truly life-changing, and I think Ryan is about to say a lot about that, too. Yeah, yeah it's, we'll, we'll put, put it, it um, I, I can't put it any better than Will did. It's getting, getting to Israel, Israel and, and being in Israel, Israel and spending, like, a, a, you know, a good chunk of time in Israel. Like, there's, there's nothing, nothing that can make up for that. that. Um, um, so... so we, we really just, we want to encourage people to go to Israel and experience the excitement, experience everything that, you know, that we've experienced and more, just to find your own experiences in Israel. It's, um, you'll come back with, you know, new perspectives and like the way that you, you would think about things. And, um, my trip wasn't what I expected. It was, it was better. It was, um, it was different. I ended up. I have, I have the best, best friends that I, I ever could have asked for, for um, that, that, and they've, they've la and these are friendships that, that have lasted, lasted um, two years, you know, yeah. Yeah, 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 which is really, which is really cool, cool since we all live so far away from each I other. Still, I still talk to more than a handful of all the people I want to play yeah. with. Yeah, even the people that I went on the same year as, not even in our group. I'm still friends with a lot of them, and I think Ryan's definitely the same. And I think another thing is that this is something that you know ultimately influence you to eventually pursue leadership and same thing with me and same thing with multiple multiple people in USY and it's not just leadership in USY leadership in your lives leadership in school and it also opens up a new perspective on your Judaism how it's important to you there's just so much you can take away from this trip and there's so much you can take away from Israel whether it be getting really fat from eating all the food um, to you know Staying in shape and running in the streets of Jerusalem, like which is something you can do. There's so many like there's there's which, which you did the very first weekend there. You said I want to go running, and our yes, Israeli staff and, and Will went out running yes, early one morning. It was a bad idea because I was I was so like out of it. I was so tired from the tr from the plane ride, and then that first week I went running, and I went running at like four or five in the morning, cause, and we we woke up at like six or seven. And we had a full day from, like, 6 or 7 to, like, you know, 7 or 8 at night. And it was the worst mistake of my life because <laughs> I was exhausted. But it was so cool to just run the streets of Jerusalem. The fact that I got to do that was awesome. But if you're going to do it, wait a week just to recuperate from the plane ride. But, yeah, the whole overall message we're trying to convey is just there's so many funny stories from pilgrimage. There's so many awesome experiences. There's so many life-changing moments. And Israel is just a place to be when it comes to all of that, especially being a teenager. You know, 
it's one of the best experiences you could have, especially with you with Flyers. And Yomaha Tzmau is just a perfect example of Israel at its finest. And would you like to say some last comments before we, uh, you know, say goodbye to everyone? Um, I just want to show this little thing real quick. I, uh, well, I, I don't go to a Jewish day school. I go to a public school. There wasn't really a whole lot going on in school um, today. But obviously, you know, all I'm really thinking about is, well, all I'm thinking about ever really is Israel. But, uh, like, even more so today, I'm sitting there and I'm sitting in class and watching movies and um, instead of, like, taking notes or whatever, I just am just writing, like, over and over and, like, I knew y'all had this girl, and, like, it was just, that, that was my way of entertaining myself and getting through a day of school. While, while some of our friends at uh, Jewish day schools were having, like, color war, macabre, like, type things and competitions and celebrations. That, that was my, uh, in-school celebration. Um, as well as my hummus for lunch. <laughs> and for me, it was kind of similar. I was just kind of reflecting on pilgrimage today because Ryan and I had been planning to make this video, and I was just kind of reflecting on the experience and just kind of thinking about wanting to go back to Israel. And it's just, it's just a day that if you make yourself aware of it, it offers up so many different things. Like Ryan is just doodling, you know, um, Hebrew, and other people are doing color wars, and people are thinking about Israel. And that's the important part, because, you know, 64 years, that's crazy. That's awesome. That's, that's just great. And I think the fact that we get to be a part of that as Jews is just amazing. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you, you know, laughed at us because we're pretty embarrassing people. We both have tons of embarrassing stories. Um, no, but, you know, I thought this was a great video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And have a wonderful day, and sign up for Pilgrimage. And Yomaz Kodes Tameach, and I hope it's been uh, a fantastic day full of Israel-related things. And if not, go and do some Israel-related things now. Go learn a little bit about Israel, celebrate, have a hummus for dinner, go, go, uh, I don't know, try and haggle with your parents over your chores. You'll figure out a way to make your day a little bit, a bit Israeli. Exactly. Um, so I just want to say bye, and this was fun. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Thanks, Will.